silver market flowers from the windowsill I threw the day old tea from the cup Packed up the photo album Matthew had made Memories of a life that's been loved Took the get well soon cards and stuffed animals Pour the old ginger beer down the sink Dad always told me don't you cry when you're down But mum there's a tear every time that I blink Oh I'm in pieces it's tearing me up But I know a heart that's broke is a heart that's been loved So I sing hallelujah You are an angel in the shape of my mom When I fell down you'd be there holding me up Spread your wings as you go Cause when God takes you back He'll say hallelujah Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Supermarket Flowers by Ed Sheeran. Very, very powerful and quite quite sad kind of a tune really i've seen to be on a run of sad songs but i mean this is just it's it's beautifully written beautifully performed really nice to play on the guitar um so let's uh, have a talk about playing it now the first thing to play in the same key as ed you would put the capo on the sixth fret okay to use the chords that i'm going to show you now for me it was just that little bit too high and it was getting you know I'm not the best singer at the best of times, but it was sounding pretty rough. So I found just moving the capo back two frets really made a, a difference for me. So you might, in fact, you're almost certainly going to find that yourself when you're learning a tune. If you move the tuning just a little bit, sometimes it can make a huge difference. So I'm going to leave the capo here on the fourth fret for this lesson, just because it'll help me be able to sing along as I'm uh, explaining the chords and stuff. But uh, you should experiment with the key that works for you. You know, particularly female uh, singers might find it better to play with no capo at all it would be more in the female kind of range possibly but it depends on uh, your range as to where you want to sing it so let's talk about the the different chord sequences and and an approach to playing it because there's lots of different ways you could be doing all sorts of kind of strumming or finger style or whatever uh, lots of different things would work with a song like this i've got a little uh, pattern that i'm going to show you which i think works really nice on acoustic guitar for this kind of tune um, but we'll talk about some other options as well so the first little chord progression you need is a c chord then a c with an e bass so it's just the same normal c chord but you're going to play the thickest string as well so c C with an E bass to F. Okay, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's the sequence, right? Now, as far as what you play and how you embellish it and all of that sort of stuff, a really nice pattern to get under your fingers is to be doing thumb, one, second and third fingers together, and then back to first finger. So you end up with this. Okay, they're all strings next to each other, so it's the middle four strings in this particular case. Thumb, one, two and three together, then finger one. One and two and three and four and... Okay, so you'd play C. Then to do the C with the E bass, you're going to leave fingers one, two and three in exactly the same strings, but you'd play the open, thicker string. Now, for the F chord, uh, I tend to play F with my thumb grabbing over the top. Most beginners are going to find that pretty difficult, okay? So you might want to change to regular full bar chord F at that point. Um, it's not a bad song for learning to try and get the thumb grab over. Any of these songs with lots of G's and C's in it, it's nice to be able to have, you know, C, G, uh, F to G. I did know that was an F chord, honest, I promise I did. Uh, so F to G, just because they all sort of fit, you can see that thumb can kind of stay over for that whole time, so over the top of the neck rather than behind. Um, 
for those that didn't realize for beginners, it's a slight diversion. Uh, but the reason I teach the thumb to be around the back of the neck as being such an important thing for beginners is to strengthen that muscle there uh, in preparation for learning bar chords. But when you play for real, you will see very often the thumb sort of sits over the top there uh, and partly to be able to grab on a bass note. I think it's quite a valuable skill to, to develop, but not something for real beginners. But if you're kind of just after your beginner and getting into intermediate level guitar playing, I, I think it's worth exploring that a little. Um, so, uh, and if you do that, the, the, the point of that little chat was, if you do that, you get the F chord, but you get a really nice little F uh, variation, which is lifting the second finger off, and it's got an F sus2 or an F add nine, where you've just got the, the first fret on the thicker string, the fifth string is muted, then it's third fret, and I mean three frets higher than the capo if I say third fret, open, and then first fret. So one, mute, three, open, one. And you can also hammer that second finger. Really nice, there's lots of different. You can do lots of different variations on it, but just get worth, you know, being aware that on the F chord, you know, if you're stuck doing that, you can't hammer the second finger because it makes it sound kind of wrongly bluesy. But if you're doing the, the approach with the thumb, playing the bass note, fingers one, two, and three on the for the notes on the F chord get away with a little bit more variations there. Regardless of it, make sure you get the count right. So one and two and three and four and one and two, three, four. You don't have to, you could keep it going. And four and one and two and three and four and. But I think having that little gap really adds to something you know it adds to the flavor of the song flavor is not the right word the sentiment of the song um <clears throat> so it's doing that that sequence a couple of times there for the intro then a couple more times for the verse so i took the c chord with an e bass from the f chord i threw the c chord with an e bass from the f then we've got a minor to G and then to F and to C Then it's an F to a G to a C Okay, so again that's C, C with an E bass to F Plays that twice through for the verse Then we've got this sequence that goes A minor, G, F, C F, G, C, C And I'm saying it's a, it's a half a bar on each one So one and two So, um, A minor G and then an F to a C Then it's an F to a G to a C Now, on that C chord, I really want to put a little cadence like a C, C sus to C. I think that it works real nice. The little fill I'm doing, it's a nice one to be able to do. I'm playing the bass note of the C, then I'm playing I'm lifting off my second finger, playing the open D, and then hammering my second finger, then hammering my little finger down uh, on the third fret of the fourth string. Then I'm playing the open third string and then the second string, which has got my first finger on it. And then hammering my second finger down. But there's loads of different variations you can use. I, you know, I, I can't remember if that's exactly the one I used each time because it's, as long as you get the idea, or, 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 I mean, there's lots of different approaches to that. So have a little experiment. It's not something that's on the record, um, but it's definitely worth, you know, having a look. Uh, then we get to the pre-chorus. Now pre-chorus, D minor. F, C, G with a B bass, possibly a G, you could substitute just a regular G if you wanted to. Uh, D minor, sometimes I play it as D minor 7, so either D minor or D minor 7 would be great for that. F, now just for that little bit, 
Mm. I've, I've moved fingers one, two, and three onto the thinner string. So for the D minor, thumb will play the fourth string, first finger will play the third string, fingers two and three will play the thinnest two strings. And you could keep it there for the F if you wanted to. And for the C, actually. G with a B bass, you probably want to move. But again, this is like your arrangement, so you could go to the standard F, C. G with a B bass, you probably want to use your second finger uh, on the second fret, like two frets above the capo, little finger on the three, third fret on the second string. Just playing the middle four strings for that. So that bit will be uh, D minor, and then to F, and C to a G with a B bass, a D minor that's F, Will we see then it's G with a B bass or a regular G? I think actually normal G without the B bass sounds a little better in just that particular uh, section. Uh, and then we're into the chorus, which is going to be C2 with an E bass, F going to G, and then it's that again, C with an E bass, F going to G, and then it's A minor to F and to C then to G, cause when A minor goes to F, then it's C, then to G, and you're back to the intro sequence. Okay, so that chorus again, C, C with an E bass, F, G, twice, and then A minor, F, C, G, twice. Okay, let me have a play through. I'll do the singing the chords thing through and we'll do uh, verse, pre-chorus and chorus so you can see how all of that fits together. So from the top we have C, C with an E bass to F. And again for the intro. And then we got C chord with an E bass to an F chord. Then it's the same sequence again, going to F. A minor G, and then it's F going to C. Then it's an F to a G to a C. Then D minor, and then an F chord, and C going to G with a B bass. D minor to F, and a C going to G. And I say C with an E bass F going to G chord Then it's C with an E bass F to G chord And it's A minor to F And it's C going to G And it's A minor to F Then it's C going to G And it's back to the intro Okay. Really, really nice tune. Definitely one that I'd encourage you to have a little experiment with again. You don't, you don't have to try it. Um, this is just my arrangement of playing it, but there's so many different things that you can do, um, different ways of approaching this song. So it, 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 treat it as a fun one. You could definitely be strumming it. If you're not into doing the finger style thing, you could be doing... I mean, it doesn't kind of... Not quite the right sentiment for me, but... I mean, you could do it. Well, you do an arrangement that you like the sound of, and if you're not really into the finger style thing and you want to do some strum and then try that, um, it's all in the key of C, note-wise. So if you want to start adding in little fills or putting in little fancy parts, then there's lots of ideas that you'll find in the Folk Finger Style module uh, over on the website. So uh, that'll teach you a little bit about doing this finger style stuff and being able to introduce little melody ideas into the into the performance of the tune, which can be quite fun. Uh, and you, of course, you'll find all of the other Ed Sheeran tunes, of which I've done quite a few now over on the website. So do go and check that out. Some of the solos and stuff, some electric guitar ones, more acoustic guitar stuff, some of the older stuff. So so you might want to go and check that and I really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel if you dig what I do do hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button as well if you want to get notified when I'm doing live sessions of transcribing and things like that they're always fun hope you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you for plenty more very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye